Welcome back for another Top Notch video. This week, guys, we're going to be talking about the 21st of September through the 25th. As always, if you guys are new to the channel, we talk about, if you're in the Thrift Savings Plan, we talk about the TSP or the uh, CSI and F funds. Or if you're not in Thrift Savings Plan, we talk about if you have ro brokerage or uh, IRAs or retirement accounts or just brokerage accounts in general. We talk about the ETFs, IVV, VXF, EFA, and AGG. What these translate to is the C fund or IVV are equal and they're the S&P 500. The S fund or VXF are equal and that is small caps. The I fund and EFA are equal and that is international markets. The F fund or AGG ETF and that is bonds. We generally do a, a very broad overview where we sit, where our allocation is at, where we're going into. We do a, some technical analysis kind of let you guys see and learn of where we are headed um, going forward. That being said, let's jump right into the video. So the first thing, these were charts for this week, guys. As you can see, for the week we were down for the CSNI fund or IVV, VXF, and EFA, down across the board, and even in AGG or basically the F fund. Really not a very good week for funds. Guys, really good thing for Top Notch Channel, though. For the Top Notch Channel, we had something... Um, awesome happen we are beating markets for the not only the week but we are beating them for the week month and year currently we sit at a gain of almost one percent whereas charts this week are down for the week so I had a gain versus uh, top knots had a gain versus all these charts which were that negative for the week change for the month all charts are negative as well and change for the year we are outperforming all funds for the year doing extremely well for the year. We are sitting at 9.54 for the year. Highest fund we have is the F fund, which is 6.7, beating all funds and returns for not only the year, but for the month and for the week. Outperforming, doing very good on top notch. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please write them in the comments below. If you wanna follow us, please subscribe. We'd really like to have you guys along for the ride. Guys, we did have a swing trade move this uh, month for the Top Notch channel. Kind of want to show you guys and walk you through that, what that looks like. So our swing trade move for August slash September, we had a couple moves left in August for the TSP thrift savings folks. We decided to move funds out on the end of August, towards the end of August, and then we moved back into funds on the 23rd of September. So basically, what did that do for the Top Notch channel? Well, if you would have followed this swing trade move, you would have saved yourself close to 7% in the markets in the C fund and over 6% on the funds on the S fund. That's how we were able to um, end up getting above markets for the week, month, and year. So that's a really positive swing trade move for the year. Really good move. We gained a lot of shares. Um, uh, start price for shares were at 51. They, they ended at 47. So we gained about uh, five or so shares on the C fund and we gained close to four shares in the S fund. So really positive. Gained shares. Um, really made it some good price movement here, gained on the, these percentages. They're negative because that means we missed out on that. We missed out on the negative um, percentage moving downward. So we, we were about stationary. We stayed about zero while these funds moved in the negative. Really positive, good swing trade for September. Very happy on the Top Notch channel. Um, if you have more questions, please write them in the comments below. Let's continue on and move on to charts, some technical analysis or some just broad overview analysis. This is a chart that Tom puts up on TSP Talk. TSP Talk's a very good website. Definitely recommend you check them out. Really interesting to see here, kind of a busy chart. The only thing I really want you to pay attention to is the blue line here. And this is the S&P seasonal pat pattern since the 1930s. Now, very interesting to see that it basically plays out uh, the 1930s of all election years. And as you can see, there usually is a run up in the summertime in an election year. We had that this summer. And then we see a, a slow decline kind of in the fall period. The period we're in now is this period right here. And so we could see just a little bit of upside based off the seasonal charts or based off what history says. Of course, we look to technical analysis to make sure those are correct um, moving forward. But that's just very interesting to see that September was in a decline and the summer was up. So that's kind of following the general president election year cycle type thing for markets. Very, very interesting. That's all I really have for the broad stroke overview. If you guys need to see uh, TSP returns on a chart basis, uh, so here I, I showed you that we were down for the week and for the month. 
up for the year on these two funds, but just barely. TSP for the week returns. Here you see the re week weekly returns here on the chart. Here's where we started off for the week, and we had a little bit of a rebound on the 21st before dropping more negatively. Now, the top notch channel did have two interfund transfers for this week. That's pretty rare to have two interfund transfers or uh, moving funds in a single week. We got about half our portfolio involved on the 23rd, and then another half of our portfolio involved on the uh, 24th. So we did, or I think it was the 25th, I'm sorry. So we did pretty well here. That's how we were able to get our positive returns out of this overall as negative for the week. That being said, let's go ahead and move into our chart analysis, our technical analysis, see where things are at, and then we'll go from there. So the first chart we'd like to look at is IVV or the C fund. This chart here, as you can see, is below its 50-day moving average, guys. That is not a positive thing. The 20-day moving average is coming back here. We're kind of in limbo here. I definitely don't. Uh, first, I definitely could see this going to get down to the 200-day moving average but to hit that average um, to kind of see as a backstop for price. This is price here, um, but we'll have to wait and see. This is now going to be acting as a resistant line for price. So we're kind of right in this um, channel here to see and where things will go in the future. We'll have to see, but um, based off that seasonal chart I showed you, it, it, it could continue down in the future. We'll have to wait and see. Technical analysis for IVV. Some things we like to look at, I just want to explain this very uh, generally. Um, on the top notch channel, we like to look at just a few indicators to kind of make our decisions. Our indicators are down here. Price is up here. We like to look at the derivative oscillator, which is these red and green bars. Typically when the green bars are up or above um, and they're descending down or going into the red bars, price tends to decrease. When the red bars are coming up into green, these bars here, price tends to increase. So we like to look at those on a short and long-term basis. The other thing we like to look at is the PPO, which is this blue line, and the moving average, which is the red line. When the blue line is above the red line, when the PPO is above the red line, price tends to increase. When it drops below, when PPO or the blue line crosses below the red line, the moving average line, price tends to decrease. So those are the two indicators we like to look at to make our decisions on charts. So what do we see on a short-term, long-term basis for IVV? IVV, long-term charts, what do we see? So for IVV, here's what we have on long-term charts. Our derivative of Oscar, these green bars are dropping. We saw our first negative bar, very negative sign here. And we saw our PPO start to cross here, very negative sign here, guys. The last time we saw the PPO line cross was back in March and we had some significant downward pressure on price. Lost a lot of, uh, almost 30% of the portfolio back here if you were involved here. Really nasty price drop for that. So we wanna be cautious moving in here. That is a very negative sign. That is a clear cross on a long-term chart for IVV. So a long-term charts, a um, little sketchy guys. We'll have to wait and see where that goes. And we are in our third week now of price decline for IVV. Short-term charts for IVV, where we sit. As you can see here, our price percentage oscillator, the blue line's about to cross the red line here. Could see some a, a, a short relief rally for maybe a couple days, maybe towards the end of September, and that's mainly why Top Notch is involved in equities right now. Our derivative oscillator is moving back towards the positive. We hope to see a green bar pop out next week, Monday or Tuesday. That'd be very positive. We avoided most of this downward pressure throughout the um, the week here, which was really positive. Like I mentioned, we got involved in charts right here on the 24th and 25th. So we're not negative for the week. We ended up being positive for the month and the week. Really, really good to try and beat markets for both those, um, all funds for that, for the week, month, and year, honestly, for top notch. Let's move on to VXF or the S fund. S fund for VXF small caps, where do we sit? As you can see, we are still in that same area as the C fund or uh, IVV. This fund is uh, below its 50 day moving average. That is not a positive sign, that's very bearish. We are above the 200 day moving average. I would not be surprised if it came down here to tag this 200 day moving average um, before making trying to make a higher high. This is a lot of consolidation here based off of these uh, large moves in basically the summer and the spring. So we're seeing some of that consolidation now. And we also do have this uh, almost like a double top up here where price is. 
where do we sit on a technical analysis for VXF? For VXF technical analysis, we have a very similar picture. As you can see, our derivative of oscillator has been dropping for a significant amount of weeks ever since the beginning of September. That has been dropping. That is not a positive sign there. And our PPO line is about to cross. Has not crossed yet. Uh, that could bounce, but we do not know. And we're looking at almost four weeks of negative decline in price. That is not a positive thing either moving forward. On a short-term basis for IV or IVXF, we do have some positive things. Here we saw price drop, uh, the PPO drop below on the 21st, and then it started to climb back out towards the end of the month here, which is positive. That is a good sign. Hoping to see a cross early next week, but we haven't seen um, a cross on our PPO line or in our derivative oscillator to be positive. Price is starting to react a little bit, so that is good for a short-term basis. Another reason top notch is involved for a very short-term basis, we did have some moves towards the end of the month, so we made those moves back into equities or the S&C fund. Um, hoping that can sustain us, get a positive gain for September, get a little positive gain for October before we batter down the hatches again. Um, moving on to EFA. EFA or the I fund, international markets, what do we see? This has tagged the 200 day moving average. So it's been below the um, 50 day moving average ever since the beginning of this week. Stayed below it and then hit that 200 day moving average. I hope it doesn't, um, it's not a forecast for our CNS funds who haven't tagged that yet. We're hoping that will hold and bounce off of that and continue higher. We'll have to wait and see. As you can see, this has been consolidating way longer than our other charts. Almost two months of consolidating. We're hoping for that to bump higher in the future. Let's look at it from a technical analysis. Long-term charts, EFA, where do we sit? As you can see, this has been declining, guys, for a significant amount of time. We're looking at it ever since the beginning of June, that derivative oscillator has been declining quite significantly all the way until this point here. Now that we hit that 200-day moving average, we need to see that bounce off or start to move in a positive direction. We have not seen that yet. A lot of big downward movement action just this week, guys. So we want to be careful on long-term charts for EFA. Short-term charts for EFA do look a little bit better. Moving out here, but just not as interested in EFA as I am the other charts. If you uh, remember correctly on our charts, EFA is still down for the year, over 8% where um, the C fund for the year and the S fund for the year are up um, in the positive and in the green. So keep that in mind with EFA. So that's kind of what we see with it. We're kind of just avoiding it. I'd like to see it pop off that 200 day moving average moving forward to get um, a better, I'd like to see it pop above the 50 day moving average, honestly, to, to really be interested in this chart. Finally, let's move on to AGG or bonds. Where do we sit with that? So AGG or bonds is below its 50 day moving average, has been below it for quite some time. The 20 day moving average is now below the 50 day moving average. That is not a positive sign. We're in this kind of window here between the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. This 200 day moving average is sloping up, which is a positive sign. But that is a long way to fall, almost $2 in price if it were to fall. Not really um, as attractive right now as some of our equity funds for the short-term basis. Long-term basis, it might look a little bit better. Let's like look, at, look at it from a technical analysis. Long-term charts, EF or AGG, where do we sit? As you can see, we've been in the negative for quite some time here for AGG from the derivative oscillator. We were last week at a 3.6, negative 3.6. Now we're at negative 3.7 on these charts. Still heading down here. Not a lot of positive thing with price. Very close Bollinger Bands, which means uh, a big price swing movement could be in the works. I do not want to be in this fund while I have my PPO line down below my moving average. That's not positive. That is not positive. Waiting for charts to change just a little bit on a long-term chart for weekly AGG. What about short-term charts? Short-term charts for AGG do look a little bit better. I don't think it's going to outperform equities, so we stayed out of it for now. But as you can see, the derivative oscillator um, this week was moving towards the end of the day, negative 3.5 to a negative 3.2. So that is a positive sign there for our derivative oscillator. Our price percentage oscillator is a little bit below our at moving average, but it is getting closer. That is positive. But overall, this has been in uh, short term charts have also been in a decline for AGG. Guys, that is all our charts for this week. I really hope. You guys are having a good week. Please pay close attention to our moves. Um, we'll be making some short-term moves in the future, I'm sure, 
as we have a new month coming up. Please like, subscribe, or share. Really enjoy having you guys along for the ride. If you have questions, write those down below. That's another top-notch video. We'll see you guys next time.